Hey there guys, it's Young Volk here today, and today I'm going to be showing you guys a video of how to make your deck more consistent. Well, I'm just going to be using YGO Pro because I love YGO Pro so much more than Dueling Network because it's automated, making it really simple, and why we may get cards with slower and things maybe get, make it updated with us. It's a much cleaner system, and I'm recording this off my phone with, with my video two days ago, I believe. I showed you guys how to get YGO Pro on your phone. So if you're using YGO Pro, just go to something like Deck Edit. This is something just really simple and let's see, an archetype that has troubles with consistency. Mm, or rather, let's see. I think the archetype I'll go for is Dustbox. Doesn't have trouble with consistency. It does not have any support outside of its own cards so far. So, first, in order to start creating consistency, you need to first try to include as many archetypal cards as you possibly can. And by as you possibly can, I don't mean just throw in cards because they're the same archetype as your monster, or else that'll be a bad deck, even if it is just that pure archetype. But what I mean by that, just like find the best cards of the archetype and just try to throw those in there. Also, so for example, with Despots, so I some Despot ones. And the most important thing is you must always run, try to run at least three searchers. So if your deck has the option of a searcher, then that's amazing. Run three. So Despot two. You run three of him because he's he's a searcher and searching is one of the most important parts of having a consistent deck. And by being able to make by being able to search, it makes it consistent not just that you don't draw really janky and out of place cards, you'll be able to get the right card, so then there's less of a chance of you drawing what you don't need. So three death spot twos because no one's on him, especially some of death spot. Three Despot 3s, no summon him, special summon some Despot 2s, some 4s. As I said, you want to try to stick to the archetype as much as you possibly can. So I'm just going to go by my friend's build of it. Oop, take that out. And then once you've maximized the amount of cards you can add for your archetype, that will make it run efficiently. Not cards that just have the archetypes where it's slandered on it. Which is what happens to some archetypes, and for those archetypes, I'm sorry, Konami hates you. But, from this point on, you've created most of your deck's core, and this is where your personalization comes in. Now before, if you were unoriginal, you could just throw in 3 upstart goblin if you ever had monster, monster slot, well, card slots left over. Which... Overall, isn't too bad of an idea, but it's still not very good. So, let's see. You want to... Because currently, you see that you don't have much defense, so you want to add something that can have defense. Speed Raider Manko. You want to read him because why not? And you just want to add cards that are advantageous to your deck. Can't, apparently, I can do. For example... You see a card that helps, that helps, even if it's not for your deck specifically, it can still help. Because overall, that's about to benefit for cards that work on monsters with low attack. So for example, that's about two machine duplication. Just such a natural combo. Like, almost like this card was made for this deck. But it wasn't. So that's just a little core right there. Then, after, then, once you start adding more and more cards... And then you start getting to the point where you don't know what cards to add. That's when the tricky part comes in. This is I'm not we're not at that part yet. But the part where you, but when you get to that part, it's very simple. You usually think of cards that you that work well with most decks that you run. But if you're your first time building your own original deck, try to see try to see if there's any unique cards out there. For example, one thing that I always told my friend to tech in, creature swap. Alright, creature seizure. Creature swap, because with Despots, it's amazing. 
they have 500 and unless it's another desktop player then they're bricks on their side of the field and on top of that what you can also do is you can this makes it an easy siding option because if you're going against the mirror match you know that creature swap won't help at all so you could just easily drop it out then you should add some staple cards like twin twisters so once you have your dex core then you add then you add the staples and then once you have the staples and the core you add the text or you just add the best possible cards you have so the difference between a tech and the best possible cards you have a tech is something that's unique to you most of the time and it's not seen very often but it's just ran in your deck and it's a very nice card and it improves the flow and some techs eventually just they just blow up our portion and then everybody uses them then they're no longer a tech and then konami usually hits them let's see and then best possible cards just being stuff like you know, because on YGO Pro you have infinite money. Solemn, your place says Solemn Strike that you uh, apparently didn't throw until now. And then two more tech cards. Well, not really tech cards. Alright, Geki. And. Vanities. Emptiness. That's what. See, it's a very simple. It's a very simple process. First, you get what you with what you can add. To you see what if you have archetype picked out already, then you see what's available in the archetype to make it good. Fortunately for death spots, they don't just have crap thrown in because they can. That's what happens to a whole bunch of archetypes that Konami hates. So you start start going by the core of the deck, and then once you have the core, you start adding staples. For example, staple in in lots of decks, three Twin Twister, because Twin Twister, you can discard a card, and sometimes it's much more worth to discard a card than to risk everything on, risk everything going against those two back row, because then those two back row can be just like two Psalm Strikes. Oh, you pen this out, Psalm Strike, your entire summon's gone, your sword is screwed. So once you have the core, you go for the staples which are cards that help pretty much every deck out there and only very few decks can't make use of these cards and for those decks that sort of sucks then you add your tech cards such as creature swap something just to fill up those extra card slots you might have left over at the end of the deck building process and just to make it feel as though it's your own rather than something that somebody else made and also, a big problem with deck consistency is that if you have not played your deck enough, then you won't see it as consistent unless you get those optimal plays that you saw online. I've dueled against that spots a lot, so I think I would know how they work for a good for a good part. Second to go, because you know, we OTK. Oh, we might not OTK. But yeah, you just want to always be able to Stick to the deck structure, get all the good cards from it, add the cards that every copy of that deck should run, for example machine duplication with Deathbot since it helps nearly every, it just helps in every situation. And then lastly, you add your own cards that have served you well, and then you just play it out. And if you have not played the deck enough, it might appear inconsistent because you don't know what the hell to do. Once you have played that deck enough, you might be able to just figure out why you thought it was inconsistent before. Can we get an OTK? But yeah. Overall, that's just my opinion on this. Let's see. So. Actually, search seven as a scale, and then this last one's gonna be a three. See, just unop, just 
if most people they would assume that's a brick hand because of all the non deck bot that's about cards in there. Or rather, you had a two in your hand and you couldn't special summon it, so there's no way for you to get the search. So to lots of people that might have been seen as just a brick of a hand. Wait, will this actually be an OTK? No. Dang it. That sucks so much. But yeah. So the three basic rules. Stick to your deck. Stick to what makes your deck itself. Stick to what makes your deck itself. Add the staple cards that you can obviously use. And then add your tech cards for your own originality. Now, this has been Young Volk here, and thanks for watching. I hope these mom, this mom player doesn't kill me. Alright, I'm out.